and that's true you know it's it's all done from here you know it's done it's not to prove a point it's not to shock anybody or anything it's just i just write down what i'm thinking what's in my head what's in my heart and it is what it is i make it rhyme and that's it you know Ghost Cult Magazine welcomes in our good buddy, Kirk from Crowbar. How are you doing, man? I'm hanging in good for an old cat, brother. I'll be honest. <laughs> no complaints. That's great. I'm so pleased. You know, obviously, it has been a crazy time in the world, and I, I sincerely hope you're well, your family, your friends, all your music. We will. Well, thank you. Yeah, man, it's it's been a rough time, but uh, we it seems like we're slowly emerging out of the darkness in 2022, and a lot of awesome new music to unpack including a new crowbar record yeah you've been you've been killing it busy solo record and now the crowbar album and you know several times postponed tour we'll get into all that but yeah man just what a good time for for you and crowbar i agree man and thank you very much uh you know yeah i've been busy in fact uh, i came and sang um a song for my second solo record last night so uh i'm you know i gotta keep keep busy you know got to be creative man so uh but it's a good thing you know the, the only thing that was tough for us for the crowbar guys is we com we completed this record two years ago like i mean mix master turned into the label complete ready to go on tour boom rug pulled out from under us then we sat on it which was the right thing to do and um we sat on it and uh i'm glad we did you know so now we're just pumped to get it out and it does look I mean, I'm cautiously optimistic, but it does look as though, you know, we're going to be able to kind of rule with with things, at least here in the States, you know, there's still a lot of issues going on from, of course, every day I'm kind of investigating and hearing more shit from guys and other bands and whatnot, but still a lot of issues internationally, but, um, you know, and if you notice a lot of bands from Europe and all are coming over here because they can, you know, um, right. I mean, you know, a lot, a lot of places over there. I, I saw yesterday that, that unfortunately, Gojira, who I really like a lot, they had to postpone again. You know, because a lot of those territories, you know, uh, they have their own. I mean, even, even, even countries that are in the EU, um, they still have their own laws, you know, and shit. And they, and you know, they do it their way. And it's like, you know, you get over there and somebody pops up positive or something, you're fucked, you know? Yeah, so. but also I think even just regionally, like Eastern Bloc Europe, I, I know that's an old, I'm dating myself saying Eastern Bloc, but Eastern Bloc Europe, like- I still go on Eastern Europe though, yeah. Yeah, Eastern Europe, like they, I saw Vader just completed a huge tour. It's like their anniversary year also. So like, you know, oh, just, cool. uh, you know, like they're killing it on tour across Eastern Europe. And then you don't see them. I think even also with the Brexit stuff, there's like UK and Europe is very separate now. And yeah, sometimes there's a, U, a, a, a UK tour, but no Europe tour. And sometimes there's a Europe tour, but no UK. So, so many things and hurdles to jump over. And even, you know, our friends in Canada can't see us right now and we can't get in. And then the thing that I worry about for you guys and also our European friends coming over, if some if somebody gets sick, can you go home? What if you're stuck here, you know, at the height of the, you know, I hate to keep belaboring this shit because I want it to be over so bad. Yeah, and yeah. we have been very lucky, I think, and I'm out West, so we've been very lucky. I've seen a lot of shows kind of slowing down a little bit now, but like I have seen a lot. I went back and I went back hard as I could because I missed it so much. And that's my, usually I'm used to seeing you in person. We do this in person sure. in the past. And like, you know, as much as I love seeing your face over this computer, I'd much rather be shoulder to shoulder with you in a dark gig. Exactly, I think the, the last time I saw you guys was in Brooklyn two years ago and I live in California now. So, wow, wow. things change, people change. But like what I worry about is people getting stranded because you heard a lot about that right when things hit originally. Yeah. Ban some bands were stuck in foreign countries for months and that's a bit back. I mean, how do you, you know, I mean, and I hate this, I hate to say it, you know, if you're Metallica or something, you can afford it at least, you know, but like we can't afford to, you know, if, if somebody pops positive, man, you know, we can't, afford to not only have to, you know, trash the whole rest of the tour, but to put somebody in a fucking hotel room for 10 days or 14 days, you know, and it happens. And, I, and that's the scary part. It's like, you know, we unfortunately had to pull out of the two Canadian shows that we had on the Seville tour because as a, as a smaller band, you know, Crowbar, we can't financially risk something happening and then, you know, and fucking us out of, you know, two weeks of gigs or something. 
um, trying to go international, you know. So we added a show in Syracuse and a show in Buffalo. And um, we love playing Canada. We do. Uh, and the shows are always great and the fans are great. But, I mean, at this point in time, it, we just can't do it, you know. And I hope that they do understand, you know, that we apologize. But, you know, we're not, we're not in a position to – go in, try to go in and then, Hey, this, you know, this guy's net, uh, positive, you know, yeah, and y'all, y'all all need to quarantine now, you know, it's like, you know, what, what are we going to do? You know? So it, it's, and it, it's fun, man. It's very dicey and we're not out of it yet, but I feel like I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic and to our Canadian friends, I've seen some of the best metal shows in my life in Quebec. Uh, Tra Revere, Toronto, and those metal fans go hard. And we'll, these American bands, we will get back to you. You will get back to Absolutely. us. Absolutely. And the Canadian bands, we want you here. You're into Eternities and Strikers and all these amazing Canadian bands. We want you here as soon and safely as possible. You know that. We love you guys. We love yeah, you. that's how, how we feel as well. You know, it's like, mm. you know, we, we feel bad, but, you know, I mean, they and they get it. You know, mm. I mean, they, they understand. I mean, I think everybody everywhere does that. You know, if a band's pulling out, you know, pre-COVID, you know, pre-lockdown, all that shit, sometimes it'd be like, ah, this is the second time, you know, they canceled this tour, this show or whatever. And maybe it was for other, you know, for, for shady reasons or whatever. But now, man, it, it's not in our hands, you know. Yeah. And, we, I, and you know, I, yeah. Believe me, we, we, we want right. to interrupt. We don't want to be sitting around, believe me. This I is how no I'm younger. In 30, 30 plus years for Crowbar, this is how you make a living, getting on the yep. road and selling records face-to-face, -face, on stage, doing what you love, and also selling merch, because that's really where your bread and butter is now, uh, with streaming and things. And I think Monarch uh, has done a very good job with this record, and really, you know, I know that you said they had a long time, which is impressive, because it sounds extremely current, you know, always Crowbar, one hand in the past, and definitely a fist in the future, as I love it. Um, awesome. There's a lot to unpack on Zero and Below, which we will in a second. I do appreciate that you know again it's like this is how bands make money they tour and i do want fans to you know i try to express this to my friends and peers and people who follow ghost call like you these tours why are they still announcing tours maybe they shouldn't announce any tours well if you don't hold these rooms there will never be any tours and you need to exactly. keep these venues venues promoters even you know the dreaded live nation and bigger venues you have to keep these this this machine this ecosystem has to keep rolling or there's no future for metal in terms yeah. of live music. Yeah, and, and it's the truth, man. You know, I mean, here here in New Orleans, we're finally doing, like, after two years of cancellation, the Jazz and Harry Festival, which is huge. You know, we got fucking The Who and Stevie Nicks. I mean, it's it's no longer jazz, believe me. It's, you know, they've had Bruce Springsteen and uh, you name it. You know, biggest biggest bands in the world. Um, but uh, we're finally doing it in April and, and for last week, April, first week of May, and it's a huge thing down here because even though in the city of New Orleans, like the mask mandate is still in effect and everything, they pretty much just, it got to the point where it's like, look, go get your fucking shots and wear your fucking mask and keep your distance and keep your hands clean and don't be stupid, you know, and let's just go about life because we can't, you know, we can't afford any, yeah, we can't afford it any longer, you know. Right on. And I think of New Orleans as is typically one of the greatest cities in the world for music and live music specifically, not just what the, you know, the big venues and the big name bands, but literally music is at the soul of the city. Oh, and, absolutely. and American history and all this stuff is interwoven with New Orleans. And I, I really, it's one of those places, uh, a handful of places, I really hope most of the venues have survived or can come back or new ones will open because if you lose live music in NOLA, you lose a lot. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we have lost some venues, uh, which sucks. But um, yeah, I mean, it does, you know, it can be everything from the big, big things like Jazz Fest all the way down to the little neighborhood bars that have the blues guys or, you know, a jazz band or whatever every week. You know, like a lot of these guys play every week at a different venue, you know, down here. And and that's uh, that, their money, you know, even though a lot of my touring, international touring bands, they still do small gigs as well. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, outside of food, you know, uh, music is pretty much, uh, and it goes hand in hand. It's kind of like music, food, and, and partying or drinking or whatever is kind of like, what New Orleans about is about. I mean, you know, to be to be to be honest, that's just it's always been that way, uh, and probably always will be. Right on, right on. Uh, 
yeah, I again, my, my hope against hope is that we just slowly come back. We have to unite as a people. Doesn't matter what your beliefs are. We got to get yep. through this thing. This thing is not discriminating. It is getting everybody across the world. And there's going to be ebbs and flows and ups and downs. We just got to ride it out, be consistent ourselves. <laughs> and, you know, if you need some music to listen to, we got a new Crowbar record to unpack and talk about. And what I wanted to start on for Zero and Below is as much as I always, you know, we've talked many times about doom and, and stoner metal and all these things and some thrash, but there's some creepy atmospheric shit on this record, like almost I haven't heard in a long time on any band, let alone a crowbar record. So it's like a couple awesome. of very spooky songs. I don't have another word for it, but spooky. <laughs> cool. Well, we went for a doom approach on a lot of them. A lot of them, you know, when I first started doing the a lot of the interview stuff, you know, I, I was getting a lot of that. Um, uh, oh, you know, like from from overseas, from Germany, and you know, and the guys are like, it's actually like proper doom, you know, songs like denial of the truth and shit, and it, it is, you know, it's like I listened to the whole record. I did a podcast with with Josta uh, Tuesday, and he played the whole record, and I was on right here. I'm at the studio right now. You know, so I was sitting right here in the same spot and I hadn't heard the record in its entirety in a while. And I was like, you know, man, it sounds it sounds killer. And some of them, a lot of good doom and a lot of, you know, when you have like a, a slow melodic uh, kind of doomy riff, it, it really lends to more melodic vocals and you can do the vocal harmony stuff and kind of get that little creepy. It's almost like a Alice in Change, Chains-ish vibe or something, some of it like, you know, which is a, I'm a huge fan of, you know, and I'm not trying to compare us to them, but I'm just, you know, I get what you're saying with Spooky, but it's, you know, it's true. We have a lot of, there's a lot of dynamics on this record that aren't necessarily, haven't been around maybe since Oddfellows Rest even or something, you know. I dig it, man. I dig it. And actually, Denial is my favorite. Denial is my favorite track on the record, oh, for sure. You. you know, I always go back to riffs and it's always, you know, heavy. I know heavy is the adjective most, uh, you know, spoken to, to Crowbar music. But yeah, man, there's a lot of fun stuff on here. There's a lot of cool tracks and it's not too long. It's pretty much in and out. I listened to it a few times in a row and I was like, is it starting over again? Because it's pretty quick, man. It's very tight. And, you know, I know you have sometimes you arrange these very long, moody tracks and other times you just like get in punch and get out and it's like a good boxer you know yeah thank you i mean i think it's like it's like 42 minutes or something well what happened was with the inception of the cd which held 70 minutes of music every fucking record company wanted every fucking band to put out 70 minutes of music and it's it's too much to ask you know unless you want to take a couple of years writing You're basically asking i mean look at all the classic 70s records they were 30 fucking two minutes long or something you know um, <clears throat> you know, you can only put so much uh, on a vinyl sound quality wise, you can only put so many minutes. That's why, like, when we put out stuff now, it's always a double vinyl gatefold. Now, side four might not have anything on it, you know, maybe at etched, you know, crowbar logo or flirtily or something. But, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of to the point. And I had spoken to a guy's label, you know, a while back about stuff like that. I'm like, you know, that that 70 minute. 16 song thing with with you know six fillers uh just to make the record company happy is a thing of the past again people want a solid fucking 10 all you need is a 10 song fucking record of kick-ass songs that flow and you know and you got it you know and that's what we hope to you know we like to think we accomplish with, with zero and below definitely man definitely again i i'm you know like i'm pleased that you held on to it it was you know i'm sure the right move for you guys especially you know you know, the vinyl delays and the merch bundle delays and production and things like that. Not to mention just the climate. People are out. They're, they seem to be shopping a little heavier and buying yeah, yeah. records. So I'm really pleased about that. But again, it sounds like a 2022 record and it still sounds like Crowbar, which is amazing. And, um, awesome. you know, we, we've talked in the past about just I think like fans have caught up to the genre rather than the opposite, which is usually what happens is like, oh, heavy metal is a big deal after the Black Album and Ozzy and Iron Maiden and these things. But I feel like doom metal is like, you know, we're like AA, man, we'll take it anytime you want to come on, yeah, the, yeah. come on board, we'll take you. And, um, you know, it's been just a very fertile, great time. There's been so many great releases last year and already a bunch this year, including this one coming. So uh, just super pumped, man. It's such a deep record. Do you have a personal favorite or one you're looking forward to doing live? Uh, after listening to the thing with Josta, you know, the other day, uh, he's like, man, this won't be great live. And I'm thinking to myself, I never really thought I'd do, you know, like 
denial of the truth gets a lot of attention. So that's something obviously we wouldn't do a song like that as a support act, you know, uh, especially second out of four bands on the bill because we're, we're, we're before Sacred Reich and we have Sepultura. Obviously, we're not going to take five minutes of the set to do this too. But I mean, on a crowbar headlining shows, that's something we really need to to pick up. You know, there, there's a lot. I mean, obviously, we're going to do uh, Chemical Gods, and I think we're going to do uh, Bleeding from Every Hole, uh, track six, the more hardcore upbeat. Yeah. With, uh, you know, on this tour, that that's that I think comes out September 24th as a new video and single. So that's right around the show. Was today the 17th or something? It's mm. like next. Yeah, it's like next week. So, uh, all right. You know, so we're definitely going to do those two live. Even though we have a short set with, with Sepultura, there those two. I mean, bleeding from every hole is only like fucking. It ain't even three minutes. I don't think. Yes, so yes. That, that's more of just a you know fucking crusher and you're in and out you know yeah it's a tight one man uh the the chemical gods video kind of messed me up man made me feel bad made me think about things i don't want to really think about often but yeah you know you we all know those people and we all know ourselves so we've all yeah. had those moments <laughs> uh and and i wish i had a junky girlfriend to give me a tender kiss in the morning when we wake up in a squalor apartment messed up on whatever but uh I never did. You know, it's real shit there. And Crowbar always brings the real, man. As much as this stuff's, you know, awesome and love to headbang and throw down at a show, you know, I know you care about lyrics and you care about messages and meanings. Definitely. And nothing is nothing is accidental or a throwaway for you. And I know that personally, like just from Thank following you. your career, man. Thank you. And that's true. You know, it's it's all done from here. You know, it's done. It's not to prove a point it's not to shock anybody or anything it's just i just write down what i'm thinking what's in my head what's in my heart and it is what it is i make it rhyme and that's it you know <laughs> rhyme some of the time anyway it, sometimes it's it's tough it's tough it's tough to uh you know pull those things out and uh Rhyming is optional. We don't always need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's true. It, it's it, it, I, I go back, I've been listening to a lot of punk lately, and it's like, oh man, like they didn't even care how simplistic this nope. stuff was. It was beautiful and perfect. Uh, mm. yeah, and you're right. And it, it 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 made the little bell or whatever, little light bulb go off in my head because I always thought since I was a kid, I'm a big Alice Cooper fan, but uh, in school's out, the line, we can't even think of a word that rhymes. I'm like, it's fucking great, you know. These Coopers, Coopers did it already. Oh, yeah, he's the greatest. And I know you're a big Lizzie fan, and you know I'm a huge thin Lizzie fan. We've Absolutely. Many times discussing Lizzie, and also coming back to that point about like even the greatest songwriter maybe ever, Philo. Those yeah. records are 32, 34 minutes, and they're yeah. all bang they're all bangers. There's no throwaway tracks, man. And, and I, I mean that you know going back, and uh, I hate to go backwards, but. Back to the thing with the, you know, the 70 minute CDs and shit. I don't give a fuck, you know, like I said, if you took the time and set out to say, okay, you know, we're going to, we're going to write this killer double album. But what happens is you write your, your 10 really killers, you know, and if you get one or two more out of those extra six fucking songs, you know, uh, then you're lucky, you know, because it's a lot to ask of a band in a very short period of time, you know. Uh, and of course, back then, people were, you know, things were really, I mean, rec records were going gold and platinum again because now you could buy them on CD. So everybody went and bought them on CD. So they were really adamant about you, you know, getting that shit out there on time, you know. And it's just too much, in my opinion, to ask for a band to, to come up with all of that at one time. So I'm all about these. You know, now, I mean, it's a little longer. We try to make them around 45 minutes, but, you know, we're not going to, you know, do a, a couple extra fade outs to get, you know, two more minutes out of the, out of the length. It, you know, it's 10, 10 killer tunes and a lot of diversity between each song, a lot of dyna dynamics, and, you know, that's, that's what we set out to do. Right on, right on. Uh, and, of course, the tour is coming up quick. And uh, fingers crossed that everybody stays healthy. I know uh, I saw some video where uh, Derek broke his foot and still performed. That dude is. A beast. I heard about that the other day. Yeah, unreal. But uh, yeah, man, that's a, I'm stoked for that tour. Like some of the best bands ever, and Art of Shock is a very good up and coming band. So you know, super pumped for them. So yeah, man, it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of quality, a lot of rage, and hopefully a lot of circle pits and headbanging and uh, safety still. Yeah, and uh, and you know, safety. always, man. <laughs> I mean, man, the thing is. Like we went out with Municipal Waste for, for a short two week run in, in November and Phil, the bass player, got it fully vaxxed. Uh, the tour manager 
who did the merch. He got it. And I, and I never even saw him without a mask. And that's the truth. And I got it fully vaxxed. Tommy, our drummer, got it fully vaxxed. Uh, Tommy's girlfriend got it when he got home fully vaxxed. It's like, you know, you yeah. got to be careful. I mean, I like to think that having the vax didn't like people were like, well, man, was it bad? I'm like, dude, I'm being honest with you. The first four or five days, all I could do is get up to take a piss and grab a water. And I, as soon as I hit the, the pillow, I was, I was sleeping again. I basically slept for four or five days straight. And then I felt weak and I felt tired, but I felt okay. I even went with my wife. I even drove. I said, look, I'll wear them, you know, cause she about like on like day two, she was like, babe, I love you, but I'm, I'm living on a couch now. You're, you know, like my stepson would come in the room, like and bring me something to try to snap. And he's like run, dropping it off. I'm like, I got it. He's running out, you know. I'm like, look, don't be stupid. You know, be smart. I get it. But, um, you know, so, uh, but yeah, I would start and I did, I did the thing because I would always look at the person driving. Now, if there's someone else in the car, I get it, but driving by themselves with the mask. And I'm like, I don't know if you need to be that careful. That's just my opinion. But I did. I, had, I drove with the mask because I had Robin with me, who yeah. is vaxxed and thankfully yeah. never got it. Yeah. But, so there I am just, you know, but I mean, honestly, dude, I would go out for an hour. I'd, I'd drop her off at the grocery and let her go in or whatever. And we'd take a little ride just kind of through the neighborhood. And I'd be like, I'm smoked. And I'd go home and, and yeah. that was it, man. You know, back listen, to, sleeping. listen to your body. I yeah. feel very lucky. I had nothing but a bad pain in the arm and no real other symptoms. And I got vaxxed and boosted and I feel pretty good about it. I feel my anxiety is lessened and I was right, able to go right. see all these shows and run around town feeling a little more secure. It's not yeah, nothing sure. against people's freedoms. We're just trying to overcome nature. The planet is trying to get rid of us. Pay attention. <laughs> we're just trying to survive this thing, man. Yeah, it's happening man. Before. Think, of how, think, of, it, think of how tough our grandparents were with like the Spanish flu and a bunch of plagues and tuberculosis and polio. And we're like, man, my freedom. It's not your freedom. Calm down. We're trying to survive. The, the human race is trying to survive. Good, here, good point. Good point. <laughs> and it's true, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping I got the antibodies. <laughs> You know, yeah, Josh, I mean, I just I tested negative December 5th, so okay. it's not that long ago that I'm, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. But, uh, and, but in the venues have been that I've seen, they've done a very nice job. And even like I said, but even then, just this thing is indiscriminate. I saw the oh, gore, the gore, I hate God, uh, Napalm Death Tour. And, and the Napalm Death guys just said, oh, you know, we came home and we all kind of had it. And I know Shane lives here. The rest of those guys are out there in, in the UK. They went home and had it. So, like, you know, wow. they traveled unknowingly came home and tested. Yeah. So and like, I mean, this I, is I, what it is. You just got to survive this thing. See, we, we have this new thing here, which is actually smart. And, and it's called LA Wallet. Yep. And we got it where, um, if I can get this thing to work. Because a lot of, yep. when I first looked into it, a lot of states didn't have it. So it's now like mm -hmm. your valid driver's license. So that's me and that's my valid driver's license. And then at the bottom, you have a little, uh, yep. come on. Yeah, we go COVID-19 button. So when you hit it, you come up and you got, I don't know if you can see it, you got your little green yep. vaccinated and they can scan you. And we the got problem, the same is, thing. problem is, most of the places here don't have anything to scan you with. So you just go here and they go, okay, you, you're good. But it I guess might you're not good. even be my phone. You know, it's like. Might be your phone, might be a screenshot, but like, where, you yeah. know. Just, just go, you know, where nobody's trying to take your rights away, yo. We're just trying to live. No, exactly. We don't want to make anyone sick. You don't want to get sick. People are dying left and right. I was talking to my best friend yesterday. We were like, dude, like a lot of people our age, I'm a little younger than you, are all just dropping like flies, healthy people. It's not about your rights. It's not about your freedoms. We just want to make it through. We want to go back to metal shows and rage yeah. and have a good time and see our friends and live to tell about talk about it later and not you know not lose our lives you know it's yeah, just unfortunate yeah. that this took over the earth and we were not prepared our pants were down and we got caught out there man but uh you know i am i am conscious that i think it's getting better i do hope that it's going to get better uh, I, yeah better. i hope it's not wishful thinking because i feel the same way i watch the, the local news every day and it's like the cases here are dropping 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 yeah. and thankfully the deaths are dropping 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 you know and i'm like all right you know but you still got to be careful. You know, you can't be, it's like, you, you can't just woo, run out, you know, or if you, you know, if you feel, if you feel like you, you're sick, try to take a fucking test. If you can find one, you know, like we yeah. got our, we got our free tests from the government or whatever, when the president yep. sent them out, Robin's got them. And we, we always like, we, we had them with us on, on the, um, the municipal waste. What happened was the last, we played with municipal and they went home 
And we had one show in Memphis on the way home. Well, Tommy and I, our drummer, we woke up and we're both like, oh my God, we're, we're so sick. And we thought we had the flu. We're like, dude, we're vaccinated. So we didn't test. We got home Thanksgiving day and he texts me positive. And Robin's mm. like, okay, let's do your test. And I'm like, I got it. So, mm. Bummer. But, that's a bummer. I'm glad you made yeah. it through. I'm glad hey, man, that's all, that's all it comes. Just, you know? we're, 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 this will hopefully all be a bad dream in 10 years. We'll laugh about yeah. masks in our exactly. pockets and stuff. And We'll get through this, but luckily we've got this new awesome music to carry us through. I just got a couple last quick ones for you, man, because yeah, sure. I really appreciate your time and I don't want to run over. I am compelled to ask, I interviewed Bauer about uh, um, six weeks ago. And I know you guys have the one scheduled date in Dallas for Down. He said that he's optimistic that you guys are still going to do some kind of NOLA anniversary tour at some point. Do you think that's still on the table? Is that possible? I sure hope so. Um, I mean, we have Dallas mm -hmm. and I believe we have one in Atlanta and we have uh, Rockville, we have a festival in Florida. That I, as far as I know, um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm always, I mean, I'm optimistic. I mean, it's like I get it that you know maybe Down is not in a position to, you know, to do a lot of touring anymore or anything. But for God's sake, we could at least do, you know, uh, mainly southeastern United States, bit of the Midwest type, and not to dick you off on the West Coast, you know, but without going thousands of miles away, you know, do something. You know, but, you know, we'll see. And I mean, you know, right now, of course, everyone's concern is just doing what we have booked already, you know, and, and, yeah, and right. hoping that that goes smoothly, you know. So. Pull it off. And then I yeah. always get people ask me constantly, do I ever think we're going to get a new down EP? Because we kind of got half the series of EPs we were expecting and maybe a new down album at some point down the future obviously you're already working on another solo record and this record is brand new and we want to see you tour the whole world behind it obviously people would love to get another down record especially you are back in down so i don't know if you guys have discussed it or we've got some riffs saved up or what but we'd love to have it as a fan and and a journal i mean we're uh we're gonna do a six song ep but of obscure cover songs that we're going to kind of redo. I mean, a lot of people have been asking about that. Yeah, that's true. We just need to get our butts in a room together and, and pick this shit out and down it up a little bit, you know, so to speak. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, man, that, that, that's the only, only thing in the future as of now is, you know, uh, but it's something, you know, so. Hey, we'll take it. And just like everything else, man, it's always an honor and a pleasure to see your face and talk about music. I appreciate it. And I, think I will see you on the road and, uh, you know, next time, hopefully in person, with a coffee yeah, yeah. or something. And uh, yeah, man, great to see you. Congratulations on this new record. And thank we will so link much. everything in the description. And uh, just once again, thanks for everything and all the riffs. Thank you, brother. Have a good one. Stay safe.